Hallo ihr Lieben, willkommen zurück zu Anytime TV. Heute mit einer besonderen Extra-Folge mit Greg Cohen. Ähm, heute reden wir über die Natur und ja, wir hatten letztens eine schöne Folge mit Anna Wasilewski und heute dachte ich, bleiben wir bei dem Thema und zwar übertragen wir es mal auf die Musik. Und ähm, ja, wo ist, denn, wo ist denn mein Gesprächspartner? Hey Greg, where are you? Bing, time to wake up, Greg. Oh, uh, where am I? <laughs> Annie, are you here? Yes, I'm here, just where? right behind oh, you. Oh, yeah. How long was I asleep for? I don't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was, I didn't sleep so well last night. So, but And, I'm so happy you. Oh, still. you know, okay. I had this dream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. I, I was I'm just really tired there. Um, okay, I this, Thank you. Um, <laughs> I had this dream about nature. Oh. I just was dreaming about, you know, the relationship between nature and music. It mm -hmm. was the most incredible dream. It was so vivid. It was so real. It was like everything was happening in real time. Everything was happening in technicolor and everything was believable. And Dolby surround. And then I heard, bing, Greg, it's time to wake up. I mean, Annie. Good morning. You oh. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just too excited to be here with you again. <laughs> It was great you woke me up, but I really am curious where that dream would have gone mm -hmm. had I just kept sleeping. Yes. So, um, so did you get any results? Um, Or is, was it an epiphany at all? It was a bit of an epiphany, yeah. One of the things, well, you know, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I want to first say that it's a great honor and privilege for me to be here taking part in Anytime TV <laughs> with my lovely, talented, and wonderful friend Annie, who, besides being one of the great pianists of the world, is a really great talk show host and um, <laughs> general um, master of ceremonies with everything she does and presents. So. That's another one of your many talents. I'm, I'm grateful to be on the receiving end of that. Um, but uh, we were talking about something else. <laughs> Somehow I got sidetracked. That <laughs> happens with me. If you know me, that uh, I'm sort of like random access generator. The, it, we're here in the city of Berlin right now. And Berlin is a snowy day in Berlin. So yes. as I was coming over here, I was you thinking about this, you know, sound, nature. What is nature? Nature is weather. Nature is things coming from the sky, things coming from the water, things living on the earth, in the mountains, in the valleys, in the gulches, in the murky swamps, you name it. All of it is nature. And all of it can affect us as creative artists and musicians because there's sound from everything. Mm -hmm. So. I'm walking and I'm hearing the sound of this thing that I haven't he heard in a long time, which is fresh snow under your shoes. Ah. You'd think, you know, the, the little snow particles are minuscule. You, you, you can barely pick them up in your hand. Yet together they have this crunching sound, almost like you're um, eating popcorn or something. And then I'm thinking, where does this crunching sound come from? You know, these poor little snowflakes that are nothing and dissolve instantly are making this crunching sound. So this is my first question to you, Annie. Okay, so now you're asking me questions? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Where does the crunching sound from snow come from? Physics. Physics. <laughs> Very general answer, yeah. Like stuff rubbing against each other. It's getting interesting. Okay, um, I'll take that. I mean, I, I, I can accept that, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, where's the snow coming from? From the sky and from the earth. I mean, it's a, it's a circle of life. It's a synergistic flow between the waters on the land that then get taken up into the atmosphere yes. and come back down again as snow. So, from everywhere. So, that's a beautiful thought. And 
all of those things, all of those proceeds mm -hmm. have sound associated with them. So when water exists, when water exists in an ocean, river, stream, or even an iceberg, there is sound. Yes. When that water is then taken up by a cloud into the sky, there's a sound. Mm -hmm. And then when it is dropped back down onto the earth <laughs> as rain, snow, sleep, there is another sound. Yeah. Not just as it's falling from the heavens, but when it hits the earth. Mm -hmm. Then after it's hit the earth, like I experienced this morning, there's this sound, for instance, crunching snow, sloshing, uh, slush, uh, hydroplaning water against tires or, or feet. So yeah, this, this inescapable association between the forces of nature, not just what we see as uh, static nature, and sound. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to a big topic. Yes. Which is, what's the difference between sound and music? Mm -hmm. Some people might consider all sound music, you know. Um, and I might be one of those people, and I'll tell you why. Because there, according to the definition of music, if we were to look it up in an in a encyclopedia or a dictionary, you might not get this part of that included. The, the sound of birds, the calls of birds, the calls of whales, the calls of things that we can't even hear, supersonic sounds, are really quite musical and perhaps influential just as much as any previous uh, composers from another time on certain uh, influential people in the world of music. Olivier Messiaen's Catalog of Birds, uh, Alexander Hovhannes's In God Created Great Whales. There's a whole litany of people who have drawn from nature to create sounds mm -hmm. for the symphony hall. Um, and I'm one of these people who happen to believe that all sounds can be used and seen as musical sounds. It's what we accept in our awareness as music or not. It's the same reason why a lot of people might go to hear a concert of Arnold Schoenberg mm -hmm. and they won't consider it music because they're not familiar with those sounds in that order, those pitches collected like this and the yeah. orchestration being sort of uh, fractionalized. But it's still music, it's still an assemblage of sound in a new way as would be the case for a jazz concert of, of dare I say, modern jazz, yeah. where people aren't used to hearing that, they'll just say, oh, I don't know what that is, but I don't like it. You know, <laughs> so somehow their awareness just rejects it right away. Mm -hmm. But maybe they would hear the sound of a babbling brook or, or a wind or a current and like it, but not think of it as music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this happens. It's very subjective somehow. So what I'm suggesting to you oh, no. and to all of the good people out there in Anytime TV land, hi. Hello. Hi, Mom. Hi. Um, Do we still have Gunther from last time? Yeah. <laughs> That's just wichtig. Uh, try to embrace all sounds as music for just a day. You know, I'm not asking for a lot of your time. Just a day, mm -hmm. unless you happen to be a fly and your lifespan is one day, um, and only certain flies are like that. Then it would be a lot to ask, but if you were a fly, chances are you wouldn't be listening to uh, iTunes. Yeah, well, but um, I have always, since you're so in touch with nature, I've always experienced another view on nature um, because of our cooperation and um, art cooperation sounds so like <laughs> it's maybe not I, the right I'm glad word. you used that term because I'm probably the least cooperative person you know you know I fall asleep <laughs> before the interview I, I, mean, I don't even know how you can put up with me Annie but I'm glad you do and I apologize for all You're the forest of nature I'm, I'm apologizing right now in front of all these people for all the non-cooperative things that no, I've done. No, no, no. By the way, I also have to, again, because people keep asking me about our first interview about your socks or feet. 
uh -huh. why you never wear shoes during the interviews? Well, there's a good reason for that. Um, I'm a bit of an anarchist and I, I, I would like to do away with all rules and all um, social taboos. You know, I, I, if I could have my druthers, I'd say we should just live like in a totally free society. And, um, but I realize that's not possible, especially in winter. So I'm going about it in a slow way and I'm starting with my feet and I'm hoping that eventually it'll work up to my head. <laughs> Next time you see me, I will also have nothing on my head. Or other color, another color. Another color on my head? Yes. Yeah, I, I will be um, a rainbow. I have a rainbow nose. <laughs> <laughs> or a unicorn. <laughs> yes, but... Um, I'm sorry if I've, if I've offended anybody by not wearing shoes. No, but no, no. This is actually a very beautiful studio, and it has this highly polished floor, and I... I have pretty, I mean, my shoes got pretty funky outside with the snow, so I'll, I'll just let it rest at that. Okay, it's more simpler answer than I expected, actually. I thought, I was always thinking maybe it's because when you don't wear shoes, you really are in touch with the floor or with earth, and I thought maybe something more spiritual. spiritual. <laughs> Well, that could be true, but... Um, but at least you're honest. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I, there's parts of me that are very mundane and boring. So I have to warn you. So guys, yeah. it's just because of the dirty shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my question. Yes. So, um, so since I... Well, I already mentioned it. We work together for quite a while and we always have these um, thoughts about nature and music. And um, my question is that how can we um, help people to be more aware of nature by our music? So we have this title, Historic Atmospheres, and a lot of um, works are inspired by nature. So yeah, how can we influence and help people to be more aware? That's a very good question, Annie. And not an easy one to answer. Mm. Um, can I think for a second? Yes, of course. Meanwhile, uh, yeah. flower, plants, uh, wow. flowers on the dress. Greg just by the way, I don't know where it's going. Probably has some surprises for us, I bet. Um, yeah, so but what I experienced is that um, just by making music and looking at, for example, the work by Maurice Ravel, I discovered, um, I mean, especially during imprisonism, how important nature already was back then. Also before, but during this time, even with their artwork like drawing and paintings, um, they represented nature in a different, maybe more conscious way. I think, yeah. Yes, that's a good point. Um, I I just have I, I want to use a little thing to illustrate this okay. to help answer your question. So, what I got here oh. is this little uh, snowman, snowman in a glass ball with a cone on the top and a <laughs> cupcake on the bottom. Yes. It's kind of a silly thing, but it will help me to represent the answer for the mm -hmm. question that okay. Annie asked. I'll just put him here. Yes. Um, so. So this, this is a nice toy for children or for adults that like to be children that <laughs> let us keep winter all year round and hold winter into this little glass jar. And it's not really snow, it's not really a snowman, but it looks real. And when you shake it up, snow falls. Yes. So it's a force of nature that's uh, artificial, but meant to make you feel something about that time of year. What we're suggesting, or at least I can only speak for myself, but um, nature is a force that we live with all year round. It doesn't have to be snow. It doesn't have to be thinking about the great oceans or the peaks of the Himalayan mountains or the um, 
deserts of Africa or Chile. It exists. We live on this world. We're all living on this world together as uh, the human species. We are also cohabitating this earth with all animal species, birds, fish, insects, things that we don't even know what to call them. I mean, we are a part of many tiered system on the planet Earth. So as humans, we are supposed to be the only uh, animal species that has been given the bing gift of reason, which then would allow us to filter down and become uh, thinking creatures that create things like music. I uh, wonder, you know, like if we didn't have to worry so much about being given this gift of reason and the ability to think and figure things out, maybe music would just come to us like the birds or the whales or the wind or the sea. And we, we would just accept it as sounds that are beautiful and that by being sounds, they're music. Now, it's my theory that people like Maurice Ravel, people like Beethoven when he wrote his Sixth Symphony, people like Marin Marais, people like uh, all of the great minds, Thomas Tallis, and going back to the times before the Renaissance, were aware of this, Pythagoras as well, that nature and music are an inescapable relationship. You can choose to say, oh, I'm going to write a piece about the sea, la mer. You can choose to say, I want to write a piece that includes whale sounds, like Alan Hovannis did. But in a way, you can also say that every day of your life, you're going to honor the place that we, we live and the nature that we are a part of and let that come into our artistic orbit. So while you're playing a piece of music by Bach or you're playing a piece of music by Charlie Parker or when you're improvising from nothing, you're including the things that you've been exposed to all day long, the sounds of birds, the sound of snow under your feet, the sound of wind going through your hair, all of these things. I see it all as music and I see it as something that could influence the way we play because we should be relaxed and we should be open to not just be thinking about the notes on the page. If we do that, it'll sound that way. Mm. The music will sound trapped. Mm. And really what we want to do is liberate the music through our lives, which can be liberated through the forces of nature if we allow it. Mm -hmm. I know what some of you think are thinking. How can you be liberated if you're stuck underneath a volcano that's erupting? Well, that's a good point, but um, I'll have to answer that question when I'm underneath the volcano. <laughs> so next episode will be underneath the volcano. <laughs> Live from La Palma. Yeah, burning uh, <laughs> the camera. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I would be ready to do that. I mean, I'm a little most concerned with uh, poison gas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if we could just figure out a way around the poison mm -hmm. gas, I would be there in a heartbeat. Okay, cool. You know, we could play the fire dance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and can I ask you a question? Yes, Annie? please. Okay. So you're, you're more of a classical pianist, what they call a classical pianist. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a better term is a concert pianist, somebody who works to develop a repertoire of the great concertos and pieces featuring piano that have been written over a period of 600 years, perfecting them and sharing them with the world, which I think is such an honorable and important cause. So first of all, oh, thank you. my hat's off to you and I... I appreciate so much what you do and how you do it. When you are trying to get to the point where you are on the stage performing and you want to feel totally relaxed, do you have anything that you do to, to get to that point? Oh, what do I do? Actually, 
Not really. I, I try to not have a too empty stomach. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know people who will like to play when they're hungry, but I don't like it. So if you have food in your stomach, yeah. you relax more. Yes. Note to self. So I'm one of those banana people who likes to have banana in their purse before a concert. I, let's go to the next. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but that that is good to know, and and I, I think that yeah. I understand what you're saying 100, percent which yes. is that you should be relaxed when you play. Yes. So you don't have distractions from nervous stomach or, yeah, yeah, or things yeah. like this um do you do anything with breathing or do you do anything with um, um mental exercises well actually i think i already i'm over this phase where i don't know because when i was younger i had problems with of course i i think i was hyperventilating mm -hmm. when i was too nervous but um then i think i got cooler <laughs> <laughs> after all these years of experience and yeah. now no I, I don't do breathing exercise so you just go out there have a little food and bang yeah I think I think um, what helped me was in general like like um, my my lifestyle has changed because back then I wasn't doing anything like sports or yoga and stuff anything anything <laughs> And now since I integrated this in my daily life, um, I think it helps me to be more relaxed in general. Yeah. So if you were going to call upon the forces of nature yeah. to help influence what you've already worked on as uh -huh. a yes. piece that you've learned and developed an interpretation for and somehow want to make a new statement with it, mm -hmm. how could you imagine doing that? To get into the state. To have nature influence something you've already developed. Well, it's, um, it's like imagining. For example, when we are playing judo, for example, mm -hmm. um, just imagining water, mm -hmm. glitter, um, and then have this joy and to spread the joy during playing and also to represent it. That is so well said. So visualization mm -hmm. and to create a mood inside of yourself. Yes. Yeah. I guess I would have to say I do something similar. Mm -hmm. um, since I don't have as many notes to read as you, <laughs> I, I think I have more freedom to imagine things, you know. Maybe one thing that I'm trying to do that I could share with you today mm -hmm. is that you know, just like um, when you recharge your cell phone or your computer, yes, I'm trying to keep the charge of nature within within me, mm -hmm. even as my batteries start to run down. <laughs> so I, I might not have been out in nature, you know, for five hours or maybe two days. You, sometimes you're on the road, you're in going from airport to train to van to stupid hotels and things like this and you don't really get a chance to say oh look how beautiful you know look at this uh, beautiful beetle or how nice this stream is yeah you just don't have that around you you know oh. to be honest you're looking at a bunch of ugly things and maybe tired and hungry and but i think it's possible to keep this energy in the spirit and this um, how can I put it? It's kind of like what reptiles do. You know, ever see like iguanas sitting out on a rock? Mm -hmm. They're 
absorbing the power of the sun oh, yeah, yeah. that will keep them warm throughout the day, even when they go underwater. So I've been trying to get Do more that. into this state. Yeah, you can often see me just sitting out on a <laughs> rock over at the Schlachtensee, and uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, people talk, and sometimes, you know, there's been some videos posted of me, yeah. it's kind of embarrassing, but nevertheless, I, I, I'm trying to do that to store the power of uh, what the beauty and the wisdom of our planet have to offer, because for me, it's one of the most important things in my life. Mm -hmm. Most important is human relationships, to, to just be with people and to have this wonderful sociology in music, friendships, and learning from other people. But after that, I would say to uh, embrace the beauty of our planet Earth. And it's much more beautiful, in my opinion, than we are as humans. We, as humans, have done a lot of things to damage our planet. Yeah. Some not on purpose, you know, it could be because of um, a tidal wave or it could be because of some kind of force of nature that we've gotten in the way of somehow just from being here. But some things we have done intentionally and uh, I hope we can learn from our mistakes so that our planet stays beautiful and healthy for a long time so that other generations of people who want to create art either music or some kind of kinetic art and be influenced by the beauty of our planet will have that opportunity as well. That's beautiful. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Really? Okay. Okay, I can erase it now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a lot to write okay, on my well, own. Okay, well, cut. <laughs> we got the take. <laughs> no, really, beautifully said. Yeah. Thank you, Annie. Well, it's because of the socks. Yeah, it's because of the socks and you feel comfy and you yeah. recharged at the Schlachtensee. Yes, I, yeah. I try to do that daily. Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, great. Well, actually, um, time is up. Time's up? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. That's the way it is here at Anytime TV. Just <laughs> when you start getting warmed up, she gives you the cane. You're yeah. out of here. Next, we're going to have uh, female wrestlers from Bulgaria. Yes, yes, yes. I'd like to stay for that. If okay, I could, of could course. I just be a fly on the wall? Yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What are you going to talk to them about? Well, nature. <laughs> nature? Oh, that should be good. And music. How about ballet? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. Yeah, okay. Annie, I want to thank you so much for asking me to be a guest on this wonderful show, Anytime TV. I just, you know, I know it might be improper to do this now oh. on, on television and everything, okay. but... Oh my God, what is coming? I, you know, I've got a lot of different interests, mm -hmm. and if you ever need, like, some kind of a sponsor yes. for the show, like, you know, commercials and things like that, I have a different products that I am ah. involved with that I could, you know, do like a commercial in between okay. your interviews, if yes. you need that ever. Yes, of course. You so. think that's possible? Yes, it's possible, please. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next time I'll also bring things to sell. Okay. Ah, I thought you, you wanted to start already now, like immediately. <laughs> yes, I, I've got this really cool microphone <laughs> I could sell. Is it's anybody mine. interested? Oh, that's yours? <laughs> oh, darn. Okay, but. next time. Come back next time. I have some things to sell. <laughs> I promise. No, but actually, uh, please um, follow Greg on Instagram as well. He has this secret account um, because he also, how do you call him? You're a mineral specialist or what's yeah, the Yeah, that sounds good. I, a doctor? I would... Mineral doctor? Let's just say uh, mineral enthusiast. Mm. And um, yeah, so I've been studying mineralogy and... Um, enjoying that part of nature, the beauty of, of geology and all the things that go into the formation of these beautiful crystals and geological and mineralogical anomalies. Mm -hmm. So I invite you to um, check out that, you know, at berlin.rocks. Uh, 
and we have some very interesting things on there but we also um, hope to expand and do some fairs and shows where we can share these beautiful minerals with you the good public out there in any time tv land yes and yeah thank you so much I thank you annie always nice work. to see you and to hear you <laughs> and uh as much as i like talking to you here on tv i can't wait until we get a chance to play again yes because that is something special oh yeah i love really always you pushing me to do new stuff <laughs> Speaking of new stuff, you, yes. you're working on a concerto now, right? Yes, I am. Which concerto? Edward Grieg. Grieg. Yes. Oh. It's, um, you know, my name is very close to Grieg. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Actually, uh, what was that? Yeah, we, once we played, or not only once, but last time when we played with my flute player, mm -hmm. Gregory, mm -hmm. then we had Greg, Grieg, and other people like the public asked me why didn't you play Greek well maybe here's a big chance yes and where where will you be performing the Greek concerto um, in Saarbrücken I in think. Saarbrücken like in the region yeah okay wow hometown region that's something that you should all try to catch either live or on uh, some kind of broadcast system yeah I hope it will be live I hope Yeah. Well, thanks again, Annie. Yeah, thank Always you. Always nice to see you. Yes, and I love yeah, talking to you and yeah, making music, of course. So, actually I was thinking well, if we could maybe spontaneously improvise something on the piano. Sure. Yeah? yeah okay, let's I... try. So, <laughs> I I don't know what we're doing, but I just naturally assume that you put me in the bass register. Oh, okay. So let's see. Okay, everybody. This is so. My name is Greg Cohen. <laughs> I am keyboard star <laughs> of Russia. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Anything you want. <laughs> okay. Are you ready, Amy? I'm ready. I don't know what we will play. Can I give us a count off? Yes, of course. Just tell me what sh should I do? Just follow me. One, two. <laughs> you do just... Now back to sleep. Um, yeah, interesting. And I don't know if you got it, but at the end we were quite together. So <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> bye, Greg. Say bye to the people. Oh, how long was it out? Oh, oh, there, there you are. Uh, Anytime TV, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be a guest today. Wonderful to be here.
So I talk to the camera first. <laughs> Just it's really you hard. You can relax. You can relax. <laughs> Why don't we check? today <laughs> I'm sorry guys well I don't know my face no no okay, okay. card new <laughs> so 